chapter 10 find the black swan the black swan is is a metaphor for something that is impossible so it's the unknown unknown uh, this term was coined and made famous by Nassim Nicholas Taleb and uh, his two books fooled by randomness and the black swan and and uh, I think they were able to find a real black swan so it's no longer an impossibility but basically the black swan stands for something that is not known or something that is impossible but can happen like so a black swan event could be let's say 9-11 it could be the Pearl Harbor it could be the rise of the internet or electric cars with Tesla 3 right uh, banking crisis with the mortgages uh, that we saw in 2008 so these are all black swan events, but finding the black swan is basically uncovering the things that are not being talked, the unknown unknown. So there are things that you know that are on the surface that are being negotiated on, but if you can find out information about the things that are not being talked about and that can change the outcome of the negotiation, then that is leverage. That information gives you leverage. And there are three ways where these black swan informations live. These are three places. So, and the way you find them is by having a mind that's open and flexible because every event should be considered as new. So having this beginner's mind to, to any new situation that happens is what will get you more percept, you know, receptive to these black swan information. So beginner's mind, Open and flexible is important. And remembering that everyone that you're negotiating with has a worldview, has some religion that they follow, they have some emotional view of the world and certain rules and modern frameworks. So once you know that, that's where the black swan also lives. It potentially lives in uh, the first one being the first time it happens, the second one being in certain rules, certain emotional, um, uh, some certain emotional places where logic doesn't live, but emotions live. And and the third is um, when you can notice things that are not said, but it's, you know, you can read between the lines. There are notes that you cross check with your uh, partners uh, because you might miss out. So in a sense, Black Swan is, is trying to unearth things that are not being said. So it's developing higher intuition to listen deeply to check for uh, nonverbal cues, the voice and tone that we saw, intense listening, detecting incongruence and lies. Um, and a lot of these times you find out information during those unguarded moments, the moments when it's the meeting has not yet started, it's a, it's a relaxed time, people are more themselves. Um, or if it's a, it's a meeting that's you know a relaxed meeting, it's a get together, uh, those are the moments when you, you when you can uncover the black swan information. Um, and if you really look for it, you'll quickly find out that this information is never really guarded, but people never really have that attention to look for it. Um, so think about this deeply as to how you find out information about someone or about the process uh, by collecting information, by probing, by going deep, being more open and noticing, noticing. That, that gives you an edge. And remember, people will like you or will trust you if they find something similar in you. So if there are situations where you can share common experiences with someone or you start a conversation with something that works or something that both sides are aligned on, um, something that they're common in both sides, and that starts with this like switch in the other person. And so the similarity principle is important. And if you are passionate, right? If you can sell hopes and dreams, like who doesn't want to come to an agreement with someone who's gonna make them immortal, right? So if you have a fantastic idea that, you know, gets, gets everyone to be uh, on a good state, then people will sign up. So if you're passionate, then people want to, you know, if you, people are hungry for a map to joy. And when someone is courageous enough to draw it, people naturally follow, right? So remember this, if you're trying to find out um, the black swan information, you wanna be passionate, you want to sell hopes and dreams that are real, at least for you, and that you can see come act, see 
it come to reality with everyone's efforts. Uh, and the deal that you will present in the negotiation also is, is a deal of dreams, right? That you would want to sell in a very passionate way and building with something that people can have a rapport with, right? And, and, and once you do find out this black swan information, these can get you a lot of leverage. Leverage is basically an emotional concept. So it's basically what does each side feel as to who has the maximum to lose? The person who feels that they have the maximum to lose, the other side has leverage. So building leverage is basically through information. If you can get information about your the people that you're negotiating with um, in those unguarded moments, then you have an edge, you have an edge. You have a positive leverage when you have something that you can give to make a deal. A negative leverage when you can take away something that can make, make the deal worse or make the deal bad. And a normative leverage that you can think about when you know a little bit more about the person's rules, their moral frameworks, the religion, like what, what do they follow? What is the framework that they follow? So these three can create leverage to get you information. So to you to 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 using counterparts emotional worldview and rules uh, helps you to build your normative leverage, right? If you know like if if this person is a veteran or if you know this person is an army person, then they have certain rules. If you know someone who's a Christian, then they have certain rules that they follow, right? Stewardship and others. If you know someone who's a Hindu, then you have certain rules that they follow, right? Um, so knowing these information can get you to deeper aspects of uh, digging in for that black swan information. And a lot of times we might feel that the counterpart is crazy, but think again, right? A lot of times when someone makes uh, uh, an unreasonable ask, right? Um, it, it could be that they might be dealing with a constraint. So digging in for more of like, hey, what kind of constraints they are going through, what's important to them is helpful um, because there, there could be constraint. It could also be hidden desires or hidden agenda that is very different than what you're trying to ask them. So there could be more information that's pulling them away from the deal, right? So hidden, hidden goals that uh, may not be related, completely orthogonal desires that they're trying to fulfill or just bad information, they just don't trust you. So you, if you get an independent person to help them assess the situation, that might just solve the problem. So not making an enemy out of the counterpart we saw in the previous few videos, but also not considering your counterpart crazy, that is important to get you to the black swan information that you're looking for. So this is the most powerful slide. Getting 10 minutes of FaceTime is, uh, way, way, way more effective in terms of information gathering than days and days of research. Like you can see the verbal, nonverbal, you can feel how you feel uh, before the conversation starts, uh, when it ends, like the unguarded moments, you can, you, can, you can listen a lot, you can find out a lot about the situation. Um, and at the end, right, this book has huge, huge, huge um, takeaways. But at the end, if we can overcome the fear of conflict, because that's why we don't negotiate. We just like give up and uh, or we lash out, right? Because we feel it's unfair. Um, there are these emotions that are in our brain and that they get triggered, the neurons that, that fire up because of the amygdala's action that, that makes conflict look, you know, like a bad thing, but it's not. We've learned through various tactics to recognize, to be a better listener, to speak more clearly, to build empathy, to have that respect for the counterpart. Uh, and honestly, you know, having your your boundaries as to what is possible, what's not possible, and transforming conflict to creativity and beauty in terms of like outcomes that you would never imagine, right? We could use this for getting higher salary, better rent, uh, vacation plans, right? How can you get a really better plan for vacation? If you're trying to buy a car, you could absolutely use a lot of this for getting the best deal in your car, uh, getting a larger donation. There's so many ways in which we can use this. Um, all the things that we've learned in the last 10 different videos uh, of every chapter. Um, I'd like to learn from you. Like what did you like the most in this book? And we've, we've gone through every chapter. I would highly, highly encourage you to read and get the, get the book. 
it's a fantastic book. Uh, what I have shared is just the snippets of some of the key learnings. But I'd like to learn your experience uh, in the comments as to what is it that you are planning to do. I am planning to use this for my rent negotiation that's upcoming and so for my apartment. So that is going to be a huge, uh, huge way in which I'm going to use this. But as I said, there's so many ways to do use this. So share in your in a comment below in this video. What did you like the most and what are you planning to use this? tactics in this uh, book. I had a great time uh, going through this book, summarizing it because it made it so much more concrete for me, but I'm looking forward to your comments as to what did you like and how are you planning to use it and did you use it with success? So looking forward to your comments and I will respond back and would love to learn more. For all the successes that you've gone through uh, by trying this and getting better as a better negotiator. Good luck.